All right, good evening, everyone. Let's all stand and take our hymnals and turn them to song number 114, Tell It to Jesus. That's song number 114. All right, on the first. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving? Overjoyed, departed. Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. All right, on the second. Do you tears flow down your cheeks unwooden? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Of you sins to men's eyes are hidden. Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend, no brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. All right, on the third. Do you fear the gathering crowds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious? What shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. A friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend nor brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. All right, on the fourth. At the thought of dying, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Christ coming, kingdom, are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. It's a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend nor brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. All right, great to see you. May be seated. Man, good evening, everyone. Good to see everyone here tonight. Aren't you guys glad that when there are days when maybe your wife doesn't talk to you or your children don't talk to you or nobody talks to you, you can tell it to Jesus, amen? Hey, I'm so glad that we have a friend and he's well known and so I'm glad that we could tell it to Jesus. So thank you, Virgil, for that song and I'm glad that we could tell our prayer request to Jesus tonight. Well, uh, thank you, church family, for being here tonight. I'm just going to be popping in here really quick to share some announcements. We've got some exciting things coming up at Bible Baptist. Uh, first of all, and then afterwards, I'm going to pass it to Brother Andy. So first of all, we have our teen rally. So for our teenagers, uh, we have an opportunity to go to Fallbrook this Saturday. And uh, parents, don't worry, it's only 55 minutes away. And also, you're invited to come as well, too, if you would like to come and be with your uh, child. Um, I will be having some waivers in the back over there tonight, so after, after, as you leave, please pick those up. Uh, it's going to be hosted by Cornerstone Baptist Church. They're a good friend of ours. The teens will enjoy this free event featuring breakfast. Uh, we're going to be having breakfast here and departure at 9 a.m. here at church, so teens, don't, don't forget about that. Um, and it's going to be a fun program. Uh, please bring your Bible, your pen and notebook, and for those of you who are wondering, the event is going to be from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then we should be back as soon as possible. So thank you very much for that. Also coming up, we have a Ladies and Girls Fellowship uh, this, on Saturday, November 18th at 1 p.m. Uh, it says here, come dressed in fall colors for a sweet last fellowship of 2023. And the, po the program and devotion are sure to encourage. So excited for the ladies and... Um, I'm just, I'm just bummed out that I'm not invited. I, w I wish I could come in there. So, But uh, I guess the ladies have a fellowship there. And then also, Thanksgiving service. Now, keep note of this. We usually have our Wednesday nights here on Wednesdays. 
but we're going to be moving it on Tuesday so that you guys could have all your time with your family. Uh, don't miss out on the Thanksgiving testimonies, message, and dinner. So I always, I always love that. And it's not at 7, it's going to be at 6.30 p.m. So come a little bit earlier for some great fellowship. And I always love the, the Thanksgiving um, services because it's a great time for everyone to be able to just be open with each other. And I, and I love that part about it. Um, really quickly as well, too, just wanted to add some more um, announcements here. Uh, this Sunday night, I'm going to be hosting a Harvest Festival uh, Helper Fellowship. So all of you that helped out in our Harvest Festival, I just... Wanted to do something small for you guys. We're going to have a good old-fashioned pizza party, amen? And then we're going to have some ice cream, and then just, just do some Q&A as well, too. I'd like to hear some feedback from you, so I'm excited about that. And then also, lastly here, just wanted to mention, lastly, we have a great opportunity. Um, we have a pastor gave us an opportunity, opened up a room for our young people to take a missions trip to this 2024 to the Philippines. Now, mind you, we've, you know, they've done it already. They, they're seasoned already, and we've never done this during our time, so it's very special. Um, a lot of our teens, uh, due to just scheduling, were busy, so they weren't able to, some of them weren't able to pre-register for that. But it just so happens that the three teens that are registered and ready to go is uh, pastor's own kids. So what a blessing that is, amen? And uh, we have Hosanna, Lydia, and Chloe. They decided they, they volunteered to be part of that missions trip. And so, um, and by the way, they're already working hard at, uh, they, some, of them, uh, some of them are working jobs already to um, be able to fund that trip. But uh, I'd like to open up the opportunity for you, church family, if you'd like to donate uh, $1 or anything like that to, um, to, the, to the fund, you know, this is, I think it's a great opportunity for us to be able to support them. I already shared, uh, I already donated myself, and I shared the donation to our teens to help. Hey, why don't we support them? They're representing us, so let's get behind them. So um, that I'm going to just give you the link really quick. It's called app.99pledges.com slash fund slash BBC missions trip. So it's kind of like the same type of pledge that we did for the Jogathon, but it's for the, the church. And if you have any more questions about that, please feel free to see me. I'm trying to help them out in getting that ready. So I really appreciate that. Hey, what a great, what a wonderful opportunity, amen. And, uh, you know, not a, listen, not a lot of teens would, would go with their dad on, on a missions trip. And I, I, think that's, that, I think that it's really neat, Pastor, that your daughters are volunteering to go with you. And uh, I hope one day that when I reach that age as pastor, I hope that my daughters would want to go with me too on a missions trip as well too. So. I'm excited for that. Thank you, church family, for the opportunity, and thank you, Pastor, for, for that as well. Well, thank you, church family. I'm going to go ahead and pop over there on the Peewee and Pass side, and I'm going to now pass it to Brother Andy. Thank you. Good evening, church. Again, thank you for being here in our midweek service. First of all, I would like to... Uh, uh, thank everyone. Thank God for the uh, success of our uh, uh, Veterans Day. Uh, and I would like to express uh, gratitude to uh, our brother and sister uh, that uh, help us in so many ways uh, so that it will become successful. We thank you. Thank you for all those who help in decorating the, uh, the gym. And... Uh, Sister Michelle, Brother Manuel, uh, they decorate the, uh, the balloon. Thank you so much. Uh, the Cortez uh, couple, and also we have Sinaya and uh, Samantha. Uh, they're expert on doing the, the balloon. We also thank for those people who prepare the chairs and the tables and the cleanings and those lend their hands in the kitchens. And whatsoever you have done, we want to express our gratitude. Uh, everything won't be successful without your help. Okay, so thank you so much, brethren. So hopefully this coming uh, Thanksgiving Day, uh, we're going to help each other once again. Okay, just always be able to be ready to give hand. And also, we have here John Jin Roman. This is very good because it has a plan of salvation. Uh, it's not just uh, the book of John and Romans, but there's a plan of salvation. 
And if someone wants to get saved, there's uh, things here that they should do. And it is much better than uh, the old one. So grab some. There's over there, over there uh, in, the, in the table. So tonight we'll go to our prayer request. If you have anything in your hand, you can bring it here if you would like. So number one, we have from Sister Edna Monzon. This is a prayer for the comfort and safe travel to Philippines. Sister Edna Monzon just lost his brother recently. Uh, it was yesterday. And uh, his brother's name is Edward Del Rosario. Okay? Pray for her to be comforted by the Lord losing a brother and also the loved ones over there in PI. And pray for, uh, this is for Cindy, Sister Cindy Mendoza. Uh, pray for the recovery from cancer. Um, her the friend Hermi Carandang and health issue Presi de la Cruz and Cora de la Pena. We also have a prayer from Sister Elena Gaspar, a uh, prayer for their sister Evelyn Aliman uh, will be having a procedure tomorrow. I don't know what kind of procedure, but uh, just pray that the procedure will become successful. And we have a prayer from uh, Brother uh, Brother Nard Pulinara. He will be having an oral surgery at the VA at 8 a.m. tomorrow. VA at uh, uh, La, La Jolla, San Diego. Uh, from Sister Ella Lopez. She is sick with uh, body ache, cough, and cold. Um, they are so sick with his son and brothers since they arrived from the Philippines. So uh, I think they caught some, some virus there that made them sick when they got here. We have a prayer for Sister Nati Victorino. Uh, please pray my, for my passport to be released and mailed as soon as possible. And uh, we have a missionary of the week to be prayed. It is Joseph and Jennifer Soriano, which is in Israel. We have Jonathan and Kathy Switzer at South Africa. Ricky and May Grace Quaterno. South Africa, okay? Now let's go to some of other prayers that we have. Brother Virgil and Sister Melissa, okay? Pray for their safe travel for, for them on November 10th, going to Hawaii. Brother Virgil will be preaching at Ohana Baptist Church. <clears throat> God bless you, Brad. And pray for uh, wisdom and their safety. Uh, prayer request from Sister Ofe Pressure. Uh, her sister Tana in uh, sister in Tanay Rizal in the Philippines, Susan Marasigan, 63 years old, stage three breast cancer. Um, 63 and stage three. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Chris Betancol. Uh, he just had a chemo, he started a chemotherapy today. So, so let's pray that he may be able to uh, handle the, uh, the effect of the chemotherapy. Um, there's a prayer request from PI from a pastor's daughter, a pastor's daughter in the Philippines named Azriel Ann that has initial diagnosis by neurology with the transverse myeli, myelitis, myelitis, okay? And today, according to the radiologist, after reading the MRI, the result has, she has a Goylin, it's a Goylin bar, Gillen bar, GBS. So it is uncommon disease in the, peripheral nerves, okay, so, and she said, thank you so much for your unceasing love and prayer, 
Continue to pray for Brother Don Montel, Messina. He just had a stent. And uh, uh, that he may recover soon. And thank God because uh, they, they found what's going on. And continue to pray for the war in, in Israel and uh, between Israel and Palestine. Pray for Sister Elaine, her pregnancy and delivery soon. When is that going to be Sister Elaine? 27. Okay. And I pray that we will get the property. The property, property there in the back, they haven't got it yet. So they close it already? Oh. God's will. Okay. And let's pray for more teachers for our school. Okay. Anyone else has a prayer there? Yes, Pastor. Witnessing to Amanda. Anyone else? Okay. If uh, there's no one else, then let's kneel down and bring this to the Lord.
all stand and go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Let's bow our head and say praise to the Lord. Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, once again we thank you there, God, and we honor you for this, for this moment that we have an access to you, your throne of grace. We come to you with humbleness of our heart, Lord. As we just ask that you uh, look at our heart, if there's sin that is in us. Pray to God that you uh, cleanse us, forgive us of our shortcomings. Again, knowing that thou art the holy God, we need to come to you with a clean heart, a clean mind, and a good spirit. That our prayer may reach the throne of your grace. Father, we gather tonight <clears throat> for us to express our prayer to you, Lord. We pray to God, uh, there's a prayer for Sister Nati Victorino. We just pray that uh, her request to have her pass passport to be expedited. I pray to God that you bless that uh, she would receive it as early as possible. <clears throat> Pray for Sister Ella and uh, her children, the son and the brother uh, who just arrived from the Philippines. For some reason, they uh, <clears throat> catch some viruses, their Lord, but now they are having some sickness. I just pray to God that you bless them, touch you with your holy hand, and they might find healing from your blessing. Also pray, their Father, for brother, our brother Nard, that tomorrow will be having an oral surgery. We pray, their God, that everything will work well, and whatever his problem um, with his oral, I, I pray, their God, that this will be solved Bless the doctor that would do the uh, procedure, Lord, and I pray that you strengthen him. <clears throat> also, dear brother, we pray for Sister Ellen Gaspar as she requests for the prayer of uh, for her sis their sister, the Ed her sister, Evelyn Aliman, will have a procedure tomorrow. Whatever is the uh, procedure that has to be done. I just pray to God that you be with her and be with the doctor. And everything will be successful, Lord. Pray to the Father for the request of Sister Cindy Mendoza, having a friend who whose name is uh, Ernie Kerndong, that recovery from cancer. I pray that this person, Ernie, that you may heal him, Lord, that you may let him survive concerning the condition that he has having cancer. And also the health issue of Presi de la Cruz and Cora de la Pena. I also pray for the comfort, Lord, for uh, Sister Edna Monson and the family. Um, his brother, he, she just lost her brother, Eduardo de Losario. I pray that you, you comfort them in this very sad moment, losing our loved ones, especially if we haven't seen them in a while. I pray to God that you bless them Bless her as she travels to the Philippines to be with the family. Pray for the family of Eduardo that um, you comfort them and you heal their heartache there, God. <clears throat> Pray for our missionary, um, <clears throat> our missionary in Israel, Pastor Joseph and Jennifer Soriano. Especially in situation right now, Lord, we we know how difficult it is the uh, condition of the people over there. I just pray that you bless uh, 
Pastor Shoya and, and the wife, would you keep them safe? Um, I mean, for Biden, and I pray for uh, our missionary to Africa, Pastor Jonathan and Katie Richer, and also Ricky and Mary Grace Grant Quarterno. I pray that you bless their ministry, bless them not just spiritual, but also with numbers, and the ministry will become successful and glorify your name. <clears throat> Also, Lord, we come to you and pray for Brother Virgil and Sister Miss, uh, <coughs> Melissa and Messina as they travel uh, to Hawaii this November 10th. I pray they keep them safe, bless their flight, and especially bless Brother Virgil as he preached there in Ohana Baptist Church. Thank you that you're using him in so many ways to be a blessing. Pray that there will be souls to be saved. You may give him wisdom and the right word and the right message to preach the Lord. Pray for Sister Precious, Sister Antanay Rizal, Philippines Susan Marasigan. She is 63 years old and yet she has a breast cancer, which is stage three. Pray for your mercy, dear Father that she may gain healing by your grace. Continually to pray for Brother Chris Butanko. We've been praying for <clears throat> many days now, and he has just a chemotherapy today. I pray to God that you may strengthen him, that he may be able to bear uh, the effect of the chemotherapy. That you may strengthen him. But most of all, pray for his healing, dear Father. Pray for the uh, Sister Faye and the family, that you comfort them as they take care of their sick loved one. Pray for the a pastor's daughter in PI, Maine, as real and has initial diagnosis of uh, <coughs> myelit myelitis, and also the Gillian Bear syndrome, Lord. I pray that be mindful of her. Thank you that. She's sending us message and request and prayer. And uh, <clears throat> just pray with her, Lord. I pray, I pray that you be with her and give her healing. And also, thank you that with Brother Don Messina, we just thank you that uh, the doctor found the problem, uh, what kind of problem he's having, that having a chest pain most of the time. And now they declare that there is something wrong that needed to uh, do a procedure of having stent. So thank you, the Lord, that uh, the doctor found it. And we just pray to God that through this procedure, that now he has a stent, that he may find healing and recovery. Um, we pray for the war between the Israel and Palestine. We continue to ask for your blessing. And we beg for your mercy that this... Uh, War will be over as soon as possible, the Lord. It's not just because we have pastors and friends that are there, but also your people, so many people that are there, that even though they are not your people, we pray that you, you bless even the Palestine, the Lord. We don't condone them. We don't condemn them. But we just pray that everything will be settled. There will be peace soon as possible, that there will be no more death to come, and whatever your will should be done, dear God. We just know that you love your children, and you will not forsake all your people. Pray for Sister Elaine, dear God, as for her pregnancy and her delivery soon on the 27th. I pray that uh, it will become successful and bless her health and bless her with a healthy baby and um, everything will be under your hands, Lord. We pray that everything on her delivery will be done according to your will. Um, we pray for more teachers to come to be a help in our school. Uh, give us some qualified teacher, their father, and pray for their papers to be processed and all the what is needed for them to come 
and to be part of our school. And tonight we also pray especially for the preaching of your word. Once again, we beg for your mercy as you bless our pastor and use him as a blessing to us, Lord. May your word will help us grow as we listen to your message. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, next song of the evening is song number 50, There is Power in the Blood, song number 50. All right, on the first. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood, power to victory win. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. All right, on the fourth. Would you do service for Jesus the King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily to praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. All right, great singing. You may be seated.
it's all stand once again. The next song of the evening is 468 without him, song number 468. All right, on the first. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I surely ship without a sail. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can turn him away. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him how long I would be all right on the second. Without him, I would be dying. Without him, I'd be enslaved. Without him, life would be hopeless. But Jesus, thank God I'm saved. Jesus, do you know him today? You can't turn him away. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, without him, how lost I would be. Thank you for seeing you. May be seated. All right, God bless you guys for being here this midweek service, and I know many of you work today, or maybe they're up all day, and uh, I think this is Brother Andy's cell phone, right? Brother Andy's cell phone, did you just skip church right now? <laughs> so Brother Andy, this is your cell phone right here. So if it rings, it's not my cell phone, you know, so um, go ahead and find your Bibles tonight, Proverbs chapter 12, book of Proverbs chapter 12. I've learned a lot in the book of Proverbs, and I think this little verses, like um, someone said them, they're like sledgehammer verses that gets you right into the heart. Proverbs chapter 12, we're going to look at one verse, but also since you're here, if you could just find the book of Matthew and just put a ribbon in Matthew chapter 6. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6 later on in our sermon if God leads us to that direction. But we're just going to deal with a book of Proverbs right now. So Matthew chapter 6, we're going to put that little ribbon that you have in your Bible. And then you go look for Proverbs chapter 12. We're going to read one verse in the book of Proverbs chapter 12. All right, let me read it first. The Bible said in verse number 9, in Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 9, the Bible says this, He that is despised and had a servant, is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. One verse. Why don't we read it nice and loud tonight? Ready? Begin. He that is despised and had a servant is better than he that honored himself and lacketh bread. I want to preach about a message called substance over image. Substance over image. I think if you look at the verse, you kind of grasp it right there based upon just the verse that I looked at. You might not have been seeing it from the very first time I read it, but I want you to, I want to help you tonight because I think our culture today, especially our younger generation, even our older generation, has bought into this um, social media frenzy of images that is so distracting to really what true substance is in life. So let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you for this time. I'm grateful to take a moment to ask for the blessing of God upon this message. Lord, I pray for several things, as I have prayed earlier, that it will bring glory always to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that the second thing will be for the good of your people. So, Lord, thank you so much for this time. I pray that you would help us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Some time ago, in the Daily Bread, there was an illustration that was published. And here's the illustration. Have you ever checked the labels on your grocery items lately? 
you may be getting less than you thought. According to U.S. News and World Report, some manufacturers are selling us the same size packages we are accustomed to, but they're putting less of the product in the box. For example, a box of a well-known detergent that once held 61 ounces is now containing only 55 ounces for the same price, but less soap with the same size box. How something is wrapped doesn't always show us what's on the inside. By the way, that's true for everybody else in life. That's true for people as well. We can wrap ourselves up in the same packaging every day, every Wednesday, and every Sunday, and in the public eye, it would look so great, but deep inside, we're missing something. You still be less than what we appear to be. We might have the big smile, friendly demeanor, nice clothes. You know, the packaging looks great from the outside, but really, truly, there's no substance from the inside. Let me say this tonight. We live in a world today that is all about image. Isn't that true? More than substance in our society. Our society is overly concerned with and even driven by image and by optics. With what people perceive as or what she should be. Now, let me say this tonight. This is not a message against not having the proper testimony or the proper uh, perspective of how people would think about us. Now, we should care about how others think about us. You should care about uh, your relationship. You're a relational person. We're relational people, meaning that we should care and think about other people's feelings as well. We should be concerned about what our children feel about us. We should be concerned about what our wives feel about us. We shouldn't just go into the world, well, I don't care what anybody thinks about us. That's really, at the end of the day, that's not really a healthy idea as well. But what others think about us should not be the sole motive for what we do in life. Our actions and our, our, the way we think about how others feel about us is a way of manifesting our concerns and being thoughtful, really. But we should put our image and our optics in the proper place and how God sees it. Let me say this tonight. It should matter. It should matter what people think about you, but it shouldn't be the main thing about your life. It should not matter that much. Yes, I should be concerned about what others think about me, but it should not matter that much to me. That shouldn't be the driving force of my life that how people would think about me or how my people would think about my family. Life is not just about good looks. And life is not just about looking good from the outside. You know, our social media world perfectly reveals the obsession that our culture has today about image. Just think about it. <laughs> what you see today in your social media or what people post in social media today. Millions and millions of people just today have posted pictures of themselves, and millions and millions of people have posted selfies with the unrealized sole intention of getting the approval for so many people. They don't even realize that they're trying to get approval for somebody else until somebody says something bad about their post. They get all frantic about it and upset. Millions of people today will post pictures of themselves and unconsciously or consciously Seek the applause from as many people as they could. Isn't it nice to have the little hearts and a lot of the little numbers adding up to that little heart next to the, I like your picture. Boy, all the thumbs up. All the, the, the times that have been watched or has been seen or been viewed. All that number that stacks up and goes up, man, boy, it just gets a little bit of a high there sometimes. It's like a dopamine kick, man. You see your friends or somebody else like your picture. I made a comment one time. I actually posted something in our church, which I rarely post. Probably four times in my whole life or five times I posted something. And just the other day, Google sent me a message. It says, congratulations on your com contribution. Your picture has been seen over 50,000 times. And it was the lady's 
Uh, this is a Mother's Day picture that posted of our mothers in our church one time. It was like two years ago. Over 50,000 times. And in a sense, they were like, wow, they appreciate my contribution. They appreciate the, the image I put out there. Thousands will scroll on social media platforms secretly admiring the looks and the images of people as they silently envy those people on their screen. They wish it could look like that. The man that looks at that picture said, man, I wish I could have that body. The girl that looks at that beautiful young lady said, man, I wish I could have that looks. Sadly, behind the selfies and behind all the postings and the images and the optics that we see, people there are really trying to seek praises and honor for themselves. And they're really truly empty of substance, such as love, peace, and contentment in their life. Proverbs 12, 9, I want you to see this. Because Proverbs 12, 9, we read it once, and I read it once to you, so we read it twice. Let me read it to you one more time. He that is despised and had a servant is better than he that honored himself and lacked bread. Two men in our picture, in our verse, they're contrasts one to another. Two men in this verse. Two men that are different in their focus. Two men that are viewed differently. Two men that have two different images of life. Two men that have two different ways of life. I believe when you look at this verse right here, there's a lesson that emerges to the surface of the verse. And in short, this proverb says, let's not be all about our perception. In fact, life is not about images and optics and how people see you. It's not all about what we see in the public's eye. I want you to see this because the first image of the first man, I call him the man number one. The Bible said this, he that is despised. So society looks at him as somebody that's not worth paying attention to. He's a nobody. Society looks at him as someone that is despised. The public doesn't esteem this man. The, he may not be a recognized person among people. He's not a popular person in the social clubs of society. He's not a famous person in the social media. He doesn't have a lot of followers or likes. The community, the Bible said this, he is despised. Man number one implies that he's looked down upon not held in high esteem in society. He's despised, man number one. Man number two, the Bible says in verse number nine, he that honor it himself. So man number one is despised. He's really a nobody. No one wants to look like this man. But now man number two is portrayed as an honorable man. In fact, man number two worked on his image. People see the wonderful posts. People see the wonderful community recognition. He must have many followers or likes. The community sees a good image of man number two. Man number two's reputation rates high, noteworthy on optics. He looks good in the public's eye. Man number two's image is stunning. Man number two is the one that drives the impressive car and he comes to the party. And everybody looks at him, and he gets the attention. Man number two is the one that gets the attention when he walks into the room due to his personality and his looks. In fact, the Bible said he honored it himself. He works at looking good. The image that he tries to portray is something honorable. So man number one, his optics is despised. Man number two is portrayed as honorable. But when you study the verse out carefully and you start to think through the passage, you start to see something starts to change in the following words of Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 9. When we dig a little deeper, we find something different with man number one and man number two. Man number one though he doesn't have the proper optics that what society would look at him as because he's despised, man number one 
The Bible said he asked a servant. A servant. Man number one, I was titled it, or I made a point out of it. Man number one has substance, but doesn't have an image. When people would look at him, they'd be like, oh, he's a nobody. He's not flashy. He's not showy. He doesn't go out there with an impressive neon light in his forehead and say, hey, look at me. Bring the attention to me. But there's something that man number one has, and I call it substance. Well, the Bible said he has a servant. Now think about it for a moment. It doesn't have the praise of man, but he has substance. He has substance. What I mean by that is he has a servant, a servant to work with, a companion to, uh, to be with, uh, a laborer, and somebody to help him. He has a servant that in order for him to have a servant, he has to have something to feed the servant with. In order for him to have a servant, he has something to provide for the servant with. In order for him to have a servant, he has to have substance. He has substance in his home that is essential to meet his needs. But more than just his needs, he could take care of another person. He has substance. He has substance that's able to help himself, but also another person. So the second line in Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 9, he that is despised and had a servant, the first line speaks of a man that don't have the recognition of the community or the social image that is impressive or showy, but the man has substance. The second line, the second man has an image, but it's missing substance. Look what he says. He that honored himself and lacketh bread. The most basic necessity of life, food, he doesn't have it. But he's flashy. He looks good. Hey, they might be all charging the credit card. But he looks good when he walks into the party. He looks good when he stands up in front of people. When he brings his family and they're all there, they look like they're stunning and they look like they're impressive. Everything looks good. Lined up in ducklings, like the way the duck would walk, walk through the park. Everything is in proper place. But there's something missing with man number two. Yeah, man number two might be impressive and he might have the right image. But man number two is missing substance in his life. Clearly, the focus it's about his image, not his substance. He was concerned about how he will be perceived by others. He was concerned about the recognition he'll get. He was wanting attention. He wanted the praise. Maybe he wanted the honor as he honored himself. He focuses on building an image, but he's lacking something essential in his home. And the Bible says he's lack of bread. He may look good. He may speak of himself highly. He portrays his life as honorable, but what he doesn't really have is substance. What he's focused on is a shell, not the substance. The other day, I did a project with my children. I'm starting to do this with our staff. I got my kids and my wife there, and I texted my son Caleb, and I wanted him to contribute to this family uh, contribution of uh, a project. So I said to my kids, okay, kids, I want you guys to think of something. I want you to think about our legacy, the Serrano family legacy, you know, like a eulogy. <laughs> so I got all my kids there after dinner, and we're sitting there. I got a piece of pen and paper. I told one of my kids, I got a pencil. So what do you guys want people to say about your life? You know, the Serrano family. What do you want? The Surround a family to be known as if we no longer exist in this world. So I try to make sure they understand this. I say, no, 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 it's not what we think that they think about us now, but what do you guys want to hear when they would speak about us, let's say in that final day on the funeral service? What do you want them to hear? So my kids started to rattle things off. Oh, I want us to be known as a loving family. So I wrote that down. Uh, what else? What else you guys want? One of the kids said, well, I think my wife said, oh, we were 
a, a family that is united. I wrote that down. One of my girls said, oh, we, I want to be known as a family that was willing to serve God. So I wrote that down. I thought that was important. So what else, guys? Come on, I want you guys to give me your own words so we could put this thing together. Whatever you think. And they started to say some other things like, well, we want to be a, a family that, let's see, what else did they say? Oh, the family that serves God. A family that, uh, that was forgiving. When we get hurt, we forgive. So I texted my son and said, hey, we're doing this project together as a family. You're part of the family. You need to contribute. So he sends me a text and he says some things to me about the text. Oh, we were a family that looked out for one another. We were a family that were uh, humble, gracious, and generous. Then somebody says, you know, I want to be known as a family that, that's a thankful family. Somebody said, that one of the, my kids said, oh, we want to be known as a family that's just beautiful from the outside, but beautiful from the inside. Another one said, well, I want to be known as a family that's a healthy family too. All right, so I put all those things down. So throughout the day, this couple of days ago, I started to make this, this little draft that I had. This just piece of paper. I put, I put it in my briefcase, and once in a while I just read to him and so forth. And then I started to tell my kids, Hey, you know what you guys just told me? This is what you guys value in your life. See, you didn't say anything about cars. You didn't say anything about, oh, I have a big house. Or, oh, you have all this money and all these kind of things. I was happy with the answers that they gave me. Because what was brought onto the surface of what my kid perceives as important are what we would call characters, principles. This is what they value. I told them, hey, kids, you know, everybody has a value system. Do you know Hitler has a value system? He valued the white supremacy. I mean, even Hamas values their, you know, terrorism. <laughs> you know, that's what they value. But see, their value systems are going to be defined based upon what they're rooted on. What's deeper? So I said to my kids, hey, these things that you mentioned, now we can look at all these things that you mentioned, and if they're really found in the Scripture, because then if they are found in the Scripture, then they will be timeless. Because if we're a family that's going to not be changing often by the trend of society, then we must have something that's changed less. And that this value that you gave me, or these values that you value, if they're found in the Word of God, then they're non-negotiable. That means this is something that's important to you. So they gave me all these things, right? So I was working it earlier. This morning, I just started to draft some things out, and I sent some text to my son. Hey, think about this. So I gave him my draft. Here's my draft. As a Christian family, we're committed to serving God, faithfully and staying united. We prioritize loving God and each other. We will live a life that pleases Him without compromise. We will exhibit humility, gratitude, graciousness, generosity, and forgiveness. These are non-negotiable values. We will give each other the attention and the loyalty that each family member deserves. Guided by God's word, we will courageously live out our purpose as the Serrano family. I drafted that out earlier. It will be some time that I'll probably revisit it again, redraft it out again, and write it out again. But see, here's the thing now that I wanted my kids to see. I wanted them to get out all the fluffs in their life. I wanted them to get out the things that didn't really matter at the end of their life. I wanted them to get out all the images and the things that are just the shell of the person and get a little bit deeper in something else that has substance in their life. Because in their life, those values is what's going to direct them. They're not run by emotions. They're not run by trends. They're not run by fashions. Or they're not just run by the whim of the feelings here and there when things go wrong. Now they can cling and hold on to something. When family problems rise up, we go back to the values that we have, which is something deeper. And they're called, what I call them, substance over image. So why is it better to focus on substance over image? Well, if we study the text out, I'll give you three answers tonight about this. So why as a Christian tonight, is it better to focus on substance over image? 
When I say substance, I'm talking about something that's timeless. Something like Jesus or someone like Jesus. Something like the Word of God. Things that are found in the Bible. Things that will never fade away like charity. The prophecy will stop. Though, truth, though this, uh, this earth will cease, charity never fail it, the Bible says. So why is it better to focus on substance over image? Well, number one, substance is focused on reality, while image is focused on perception. Substance is focused in reality, while image is focused on perception. See, if you look at the verse, he that is despised, the man wasn't as focused on his image. But the second man, he that honored himself, he was focused on his image, which is perception. See, reality is better than perception. Reality is the notion of what really exists. In other words, reality is what really matters. Reality is not about a splashy show that the world values. It is the reality of dealing with the responsibilities of life that we have to deal with. It's being a hus- the right husband and being the right wife and being the person that's there for their family or being faithful to God. That's the reality of life. What we do for Jesus Christ is about the working person that works hard, that knows that he has to clock in and clock out and provide for his family. And he has to know that he has to cut back on some things and focus on uh, living a life that maybe might be simple. It might not be lavish, but a life that's simple, but provides for his family and takes his family to church. And, uh, and he succeeds to have a servant, like the Bible says. He finds a servant, and he's able to help a servant. But also, in turn, he benefits from helping the servant. He lives within his means. He doesn't purchase things with his credit card and runs up his bill and just to present that, hey, he got everything in life, but really in the end of the day, he doesn't even have bread to feed himself. He didn't focus on the fads and the trends that waste a lot of money. He made sure he focused on good substance. He secured his finances so he could secure his future. Wow, how practical is this verse when we think about it? That how many people today will go out there and buy the expensive vehicles to barely even pay for their own meal and expect mom and dad to pay for their own meal. <laughs> it happens there. When well, themselves can't even take care of their own selves, but sure, they could drive a nicer car than their parents. They're driving the newest car. Why? Because their college classmates can be impressed. So they could get the honor of driving the nice car. But in turn, the mom and the dad is actually paying the insurance for it and still doing their laundry. We live in a society like that, don't we? They have their priorities wrong. They don't live in reality. They live in an image-driven life. And it's a fantasy that's not worth paying for. Substance is focused on reality rather than image. Because living reality is better than living a fantasy. So why is, why is it better to focus on substance over image? Number one, substance is focused on reality, while image is po- focused on perception. Number two, substance is focused on character, while image is focused on pretense. Pretense is to make an attempt to present something that is not the case to appear true. It's like, hey, look at me, look at the car I'm driving, but I'm actually just, it's just alone. <laughs> and I don't even have a house, and I'm living with my mom, but trying to pretend that you're wealthy. The man in number two, it says here, better than he that honored himself and lacked bread. He looks honorable. But in truth, he's just living a pretense. How did the man acquire a servant? Well, by diligent work. It doesn't say in our text, but I can assume, and I'm safe to assume this, that he probably worked hard. 
It is the same, but we can't argue that it took discipline to acquire wealth and hard work to secure a servant. It may be the man got up early in the morning. Maybe he worked hard. He worked late. Maybe he saved and didn't give into the pleasure so he can only, so one day he could take care of himself. And then because of that, he started to reap the benefit of providing to get a servant. Maybe he took the time to mentor someone, invest in somebody else's life. And in turn, he was able to help someone and that person was willing to work for the man. Whatever the case was, the focus was not on the pretense, it was on character. See, character is better, it's a better substance than what appears to be, but actually it's not. Character is better than pretense. So why is it better to focus on substance over image? Substance is focused on reality, while image is focused on perception. Substance is focused on character, while image is focused on pretense. Number three, substance is focused on action, while image is focused on words. It's easy to talk about things. It's easy to say things. People can speak eloquently, but when it comes to actually doing things, their actions deny their words. Talk is cheap, as somebody said. Action is better than words. Often in the scripture, we find, we find this idea of not just being hearers of the word, but being doers of the word. James 2, 14 to 18 gives us this idea. What did it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? Or that kind of faith, is that a real faith? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give him not what he needed for the body, what did it profit? Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show you my faith. By my words. See, action is better than words. James 1, 22 to 24, I quoted a portion of it. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like unto a man that beholded himself, his natural face in a glass. For he beholded himself and go it his way and straightway forget it what manner of man he was. See, the first man focused on doing something more than just impressing and glorifying himself. The second man focused on his image, but didn't focus on the essential substance of life. See, it's important to focus on the true substance of life, isn't it? Don't focus on image-driven lies that will leave you empty. There's so many lies about that in social media today that people will just buy into it and believe the lie. Work in developing character. Live in reality. Be active in your responsibility as a believer, and you'll realize it will give your life a greater substance. The Lord looks into the heart, doesn't he? We see that in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 7. God focuses on what matters to God. Is the substance of the heart. So I told you to go find Matthew, right? And put that ribbon in there. So if you have that ribbon in there, just flip over there real quickly, and you should be able to find it right away. Matthew chapter 6. Because Jesus had the same principle in the New Testament. See, in the Old Testament, if the preaching is right, it will line up to the teachings of Jesus Christ. He's the eternal word of God, that's why. If the preaching is wrong, It won't line up to the eternal word of God because the preaching is wrong. So this principle about the focus is on the substance of the greater part more than the image of the person. Jesus was teaching his disciples something about this lesson. So Matthew, you're there? Chapter 6. I want you to see how Jesus Christ brings this truth out in this portion of the scripture. 
Verse number one. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them, the image. The focus there shouldn't be the image. That's what Jesus is saying. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have glory of man or receive honor for oneself. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thy alms may be in secret, and the Father will see it in secret, himself shall reward thee openly. So when Jesus teaches this focus about serving him, it says, hey, don't do it for an image. Don't do it so just people can see you. And don't be motivated just because of the image. Slide down to verse number five. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Well, let me just say something. I say that a lot of the hypocrites like praying more than a lot of people, <laughs> but their motive is wrong. See, I wish we would at least like to pray like the hypocrites, but their motive is wrong. Look what he says. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, and here's their intent, that they may be seen of men. The focus is on the image. They want to be seen. Hey, look how good I am. Look how spiritual I am. Look how my family is. Hey, we're all in Wednesday night service. Hey, look at this. You know, we have the right attire. We have the right dress. And everything looks great. But there's something deeper that Jesus is trying to teach his disciple, and it's just the substance of one's life. Verse number five. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, but when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is secret, and thy father, which see it in secret, shall reward thee openly. And when you pray, use not vain repetitions that he didn't do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Slide down a few verses in verse number 16. So he talks about doing alms, that means doing good works. He talks about praying, and in verse number 16, he's going to talk about fasting. Look what he says. Moreover, when you fast, verse number 16, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their face. Why? That they may appear unto man to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto man to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. Well, God can bring out the right image in our life when we do things for him, when our heart is right. And when we focus on the substance of our heart, in our life, then there's a greater reward that awaits us. See, we live in a world today that everything has to look good from the outside. Our family has to look right. You know what used to bother me? When my kids don't look right in public. Let's just be honest. That they used to trouble me. I've matured a little bit more. You know, I don't try to focus on the outside as much as what I used to think about as much as I used to think that was really important. I'm not saying don't correct your kids. I'm just saying they should be, still know how to behave properly with their proper conduct. But now I started to stop here for a moment and say, well, wait a minute. Let me go deeper into their life and help them develop what is more lasting and that's the character that they need to develop the proper behavior in life. So down the road, those private victories, which are the character, the humility, and the grace, will manifest into public victories in their life. You know, everywhere in the Bible, there's so many things that we can look at that we can miss just looking at the standards of a person's life and thinking, well, you know, they're not doing the same thing we're doing, then we forget there's a deeper thing in life 
that's substance. We can become so consumed with how we want people to see us that at the end we miss out what truly matters. You know, tonight God wants you to focus on substance over image. Are you raising your kids with substance? Are you, are, is our ministry focused on the image only or the substance that they're getting from the teaching of God's word? Is your marriage focused on just the shell or is your marriage focused on something deeper than just the external? Let me help you get this point across tonight. Commissioned in 1936, the RMS Queen Mary was the most awe-inspiring ocean-going vessel in the world. She was 1,019 feet long, 81,237 tons, displaced twice the tonnage of the Titanic, had 12 decks. The promenade deck was 724 feet long and carried 1,957 passengers that attended by a crew of 1,174. That is a big ship. Transformed from a luxury line, liner to a troop transport on World War II, she carried 765,429 members of the military to and from the European wars. The Queen Mary was retired from regular passenger service in 1967 after making 1,001 Atlantic Ocean crossing and is presently harbored in the port of Long Beach, California. Maybe some of you have attended it already. Even today, her magnificent and gleaming exterior cuts a beautiful profile against the blue waters of the Long Beach Harbor. But when the Queen Mary was retired from active passenger service, it was discovered that part of her gleaming exterior was hiding something far less attractive and substantial. The Queen Mary's three elliptical smokestacks, 36 feet long, 23 feet wide, and ranging from 70 down to 62 feet in height, were made of steels, sheets of steels over an inch thick. During her decades of service, at least 30 coats of paint have been applied to the massive smokestacks, forming a shell around the steel interior. But when the smokestacks were removed for maintenance, after her decommissioning, it was discovered that they were nothing but shells. When lifted off the liner and placed on the docks, they crumbled. Over the years, the thick steel of which they had been made had turned to rust from long exposures to heat and moistures. The beautiful exteriors, the smokestacks, revealed a rusty, crumbly interior that spoke not of beauty and elegance, but of deterioration and decay. The external appearance was hiding the internal reality. Hopefully your Christian life is not like that. Painted with a beautiful image, with the nice smile, the nice attire, the perfect schedule of life, but deep inside you're decaying and deteriorating because you don't have the substance that you have that's found in the relationship of Jesus Christ. As we look at the man that lacked bread, may you never lack the bread of life that really needs to be the true substance of our life. See, our focus tonight is in the bread of life not the image of our Christianity, but the image of the Son of God, the true bread of life. Lord, thank you for tonight. May you bless the message tonight, Lord, and may we go deeper than just hearing the word of God, but may we be doers of the word of God tonight. Lord, let's live in the reality, Lord, that our relationship is important to Jesus. Let us not live neglect our walk with the Lord, our time in our word, in your word, and our manifestation of love and Christian ethics to one another. I pray that you would help us, Lord God, to make some examinations in our life, Lord, and what we're focused on. Maybe it's just simple adjustment, Lord, in what we're doing tonight. The Lord, our relationship with you, our conviction to you, may become deeper and richer because we heard from your word. May you bless tonight, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand for a moment. And the music is going to play. As the music plays, tonight, make a decision. 
Young people, messages like this, I know it's easy to get so absorbed with the frenzies of social media and image-driven culture that we forget that there's an image of Christ that needs to be manifested in our life. That we forget the essential things of life, the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. Is the inside deteriorating and decaying? Is the marriage deteriorating and decaying? Because it's just freshly painted inside. Another layer of paint. It's a great facade, but deep inside. Deep inside is empty. Are we seeking the praises of man to be seen of man? But in turn, we really miss out the true audience of our life, and that's God. What are you valuing in your family tonight? In your life? Thank you so much for joining us today for our live stream. I pray that you've been spiritually refreshed by today's message. If you made a decision today, we would love to hear about it at BibleBaptistSD.org slash respond to hear about what God has been working in your heart. If you would like to financially support Bible Baptist Church, visit BibleBaptistSD.org slash give. If you haven't joined us here yet in person, we look forward to you being here the next time our doors are open. If you would like to know more information about Bible Baptist Church and what's going on here, please visit our website. Thank you again so much for joining us today, and we'll see you again very soon.